who we lassie. <laughs> I love how cats always just give you that piss off you peasant look. <sighs> but I love you. I love you, my wee lassie. So hi guys, look at me in my dress and gown. My stolen dress and gown. I stole this from JB Sweets in Bali. Mm-hmm. Can't be the only one that goes into hotel rooms and they see all the wee toiletries and they just open their bag and just sweep everything in. And I also straightened my hair. I feel like whenever you don't straighten your hair for so long, you realise like how much it's actually grown. Like it's way past my booby and everything. Love it! So for today's tutorial, I'm actually going to do my full coverage, long lasting, long wearing foundation routine. And I'm also going to do, you know that trending lip combo that's gone about recently? The Jess Hunt Red Lip Combo. So I've done my skin prep, so I'm just going to continue on now with primer. So I'm using the e.l.f. Jelly Pop primer. In all honesty, I'm not the biggest fan on these types of sticky, jelly looking, gooey primers, but whenever I'm wanting my makeup to last, and especially if I'm wanting a more mattifying base, these are the primers that I'm going to go for and gravitate towards. And with me having dry skin, I technically do actually prefer my skin to be a wee bit more matte. I like my base to be more matte fine. And then I like to add my glow wherever I want to. And also, for this time of year, I do prefer to have a more matte fine base. I feel like summer skin is more glowy, more G, whereas winter, fall, I do prefer to have a more matte finish. I was going to use the NARS, the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation, because it's just an absolute go-to. It has the most beautiful full coverage, with a still feeling really Really, really lightweight. However, I'm going to use my other favourite because I haven't used this in a while. This is the Chroma Cover from Be Perfect Cosmetics. Uh, I'm not really that tanned at the minute, so I'm using the shade N4. And I'm going to be taking this on my Sigma Multitasker M47 brush. Yeah, I kind of forgot that the pumps in these foundations are a wee bit dodgy. I'm trying to be like aesthetically pleasing to look at but say doing your makeup with your hair down around your face gives me the ultimate ick. Oh yes that colour is good. I have no fit tan on my face so bear with me with that. So I first of all just like to press this foundation into my skin using a brush and then I will finish with a sponge. Mainly because I prefer the finish a sponge gives. I have not worn this foundation in so long and I've honestly forgotten how nice it is. Oh, look at that. Look how beautiful this foundation is. It is absolutely stunning. If you haven't tried this foundation yet, go buy it now. Like, like right now. <laughs> and don't forget to use my discount code for 20% off on Be Perfect Cosmetics. Oh, this is gonna be so horrible. This just like defeats my whole purpose of this video. <laughs> I washed my beauty sponges last night and they're still wet and I, well damp, and I don't use a damp beauty sponge. I go in and blend my foundation, concealer, cream bronzer, cream blush, whatever, with a dry beauty sponge. If you've been watching my tutorials for years at this point, you would know that, but... <sighs> So I'm now just going to go in and just blend all over my skin and this is just going to maybe lift off any excess and just blend into the skin a wee bit more. But this foundation is definitely one of my go-to foundations if I really want my makeup to last all day and not budge. And it's also like a really full coverage thick foundation without actually feeling it. It does feel quite lightweight on the skin. I wouldn't say as much as the NARS foundation and the finish of it is absolutely beautiful. You can still see like there's a wee bit of a dew coming through my skin so I do feel like it's more of a satin finish but it does dry down. This is the Tarte Shape Tape. I always end up coming back to this. It's an oldie but an absolute goodie. To be fair, I probably would be actually using the HMB concealer if I did have it. I do have it, but it's just the wrong shade. It's just too brightening or something. I think the shade is like 0 0.5, so it is very, very bright on my under eyes. So I'm going to take two cream bronzers, a wee bit unnecessary, but the reason for that is because I'm taking the Refi 
cream bronzer in the shade tan i feel like this is a really really beautiful color however this color it's the strangest thing it looks beautiful on my cheek area but you see once i put it on my forehead it legit looks as if i have cream bronzed with a red lipstick it just looks and comes across as being too red toned or something it's the strangest thing but i do like it for my cheeks <laughs> So I'm using the BK Beauty 101 brush. This is the wee travel size brush. So usually I would lay this on and then go in with my sponge. My sponge. <laughs> Why did I say that like that? My sponge. But I'm just going to be stippling and pressing this into the skin and laying it on and blending it at the same time. And then if I need to, I'll go in and do a wee bit more blending and pressing into the skin with my sponge. I'm going to go in with a clean sponge now. And you see where my concealer meets my now cream bronzer. I'm just going to do a wee bit of blending. And that will just mesh my concealer and the cream bronzer together. And then I'm going to go round my cheek. And just blend the edges and just so at the concealer and the cream bronzer it just melts into just melts in together i'm gonna go back in with my concealer sponge Ugh. it feels so weird using like wet cold sponges <laughs> i'm also gonna go pretty ham off the blush as well by the way and i feel like this is the perfect color especially for this time of year it's absolutely stunning this is actually from Colourpop and it's the snitcher collection this is one of those shades of blushes that i seen and i was like eh, nope <laughs> until i used it it's honestly not as scary as it might look it is beautiful and i feel like the formula of these blushes from Colourpop are really nice as well because they're not too too heavily pigmented you can obviously build it up but you can be a wee bit more subtle with it they're they're easy to play with and they're very beginner friendly but I'm going to make this quite a blushed look. So I'm going to bring it a wee bit higher and I'm going to bring it in more. And I think I might actually apply a wee bit on my nose as well. And again, I'm just taking just like a wee fluffy brush just to apply this. So I changed my rim around again. <laughs> I feel like the lighting is definitely better over here. So I'm now again back to sitting. Oh God, I just dumped that right off my table. So yeah, I'm now again just sitting in front of my window. I feel like the lighting is just so much better. Whereas like I'm actually looking over to that corner that I was in and it's just like dark, dismal, depressing. <laughs> like I just don't know what made me think that I was going to be okay filming over there. I'm going to go in now with a sponge and just give that a wee blend. Usually I don't like to bring my blush right up into my under eyes. I'm not necessarily going right up into my under eyes, but I'm going to bring it over further than what I usually would do. And again, I'm going to build that up. That's usually what I like to do with my cream blushes. I like to just take the tiny little bit at a time because it's always easier to apply than fucking up. <laughs> And just a wee bit on, just like on my nose. Just feel like that really like cute, flushed look. I'm kind of on the fence, not too sure what I'm wanting to do yet, whether I'm wanting to apply full freckles or not. I'm that looks absolutely stunning i'm gonna apply some more i'm sorry i can't be stopped i can't be tamed sue me arrest me and i'm now gonna set my skin within an inch of its life i like to first off use a pressed scent powder because i do not like to go in straight away with a loose scent powder on my sticky skin <laughs> literally just this wee triangle here because like it or not this is just where i know rightly i'm gonna crease throughout the day and then I also like to bring it down onto my smile lines on my chin. I literally do my chin just for shits and giggles. I, however, do not set my forehead. I don't like to you put uh, a lot of product on my forehead. You'll notice I don't even put concealer on my forehead. Just cream bronzer, foundation obviously, and just bronzer whenever I'm bronzing. Because I just feel like it's 
I have a lot of lines in my forehead and I don't necessarily want to emphasize that and I feel like if you have a lot of product on your forehead it's a really dead giveaway as to how much makeup you're actually wearing. I don't know, I just mm, I just don't like to wear a lot of makeup on my forehead and I love like my natural dew come through my forehead too. I'm gonna go in with the Hourglass, oh my god my powder puff's damp too. <laughs> Can I finish my sentence? This is why I don't necessarily like to call it becking because I do not leave the loose powder on my skin long enough to beck it, okay? I straight away like to dust this off. I'm taking the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill JH06 brush and I just like to use this to dust off that loose powder. And you see whatever excess is on this brush, I will do a light dusting and a press, like dusting, and a press, because I obviously don't want to like, disrupt any of that uh, makeup on my forehead, you see. And it's just going to set my forehead a wee bit without completely mattifying it. And then again, just dust that off my under eyes. This is a hydrate and setting spray that I'm using, by the way. Um, feel free to go in with a setting spray of your preference, like for example, the All Nighter by Urban Decay or a more longer lasting type of setting spray or a mattifying setting spray. It all kind of comes down to your, your, not only like your skin type, but your preference as well. I obviously do have my preference with I like to have my skin looking matte, feeling matte, whatever, but I still like to have like my hydrate and setting mists and you know, just wee things like that. See these wee duos here from Iconic London? I do not understand how and why so many more people don't talk about these. These are so amazing. This is one of the products that I took with me to Bali and I used this every single day. And I actually came home and I keep on using it. I cannot stop using this. But it is their Silk Glow Duo and it is in the shade Coral Glow. So we have a blush and a highlight. And the blush has a slight glow to it as well. To the blush, then into the highlight, back into the blush, back into the highlight and it would have meant that I didn't need to go in with highlight because this is not only like a really nice glowy blush but obviously I have a bit of the highlight on the blush on the brush too oh my god <laughs> and I'm also going to be bringing this up quite high as well and I'm going to be bringing it over even further than I usually would and this is like the perfect blush as well, I feel like colour wise for, you know, that strawberry makeup look that was trend in there. I feel like this is actually the blush that I use in that tutorial. But you can see now where I'm starting to add my glow where I want it to be. I've modified my skin, we're all set in the right places and we're going to last all day. But I'm now just adding my glow in the areas where I want my glow. I'm going to continue to be an absolute head melt. I'm just going to use this until it's done, by the way. And then just on the forehead, this powder bronzer is going to set that cream bronzer. The Vive Quad, this is the Soul Shadows in the shades Burn. So I'm just going to take this shade here. And I'm going to run this along my crease. Even if I'm not doing a lot on my eyes, I'll always put something, something quite neutral, just in the crease. I'm also going to take the Be Perfect Pot at Jealousy Nude Eyeliner. This is in the shade Mute. This is probably the best nude eyeliner that I have tried. Oh, that was tickly. What's up, beauty? Watch me, mascara. There's two different sides to this brush. We have like a bristle side and then like a brush side. So I like to use the bristle side first. And 
and then use the comb side to just comb through my lashes and just separate them. Alrighty, so I have two red lip liners here, one from El Maquillage and one from Urban Decay. Depends what one I sharpened more. Urban Decay. Can you, I really hope you can't hear my stomach because you're maybe going to be thinking that I have not shat in a month. That is honestly how my stomach sounds. <laughs> Jesus. And I'm just going to go around that lip liner and just give it a wee bit of a smudge. I think it's maybe supposed to be done with a red gloss. However, I don't have a red gloss. But I do have the Anastasia Beverly Hills gloss in the shade Honey Diamond. I'm just going to take a wee bit of this and see what happens. Oh, what? No. I think there's too much glitter in that. Hold on, take go and find another lip gloss. to go over this again there's <laughs> at least the see on my bottom lip it's far too much glitter in that lip gloss gorgeous lip gloss but no not for this look um so i have these two lip oils from colourpop cherry bite raspberry mojito go for cherry bite So these aren't really supposed to be intended to provide much colour or anything. I think the lips actually tie in really nicely with like a really heavy blushed look as well. Really, really nice actually. I feel like it's just like a, a really nice, simple yet glam winter type of makeup look. Thank you again so, so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.